How is it going everybody? So I've got a wee bit of ex talking today first and then I'll start uh, working but obviously I've no made a video in months properly so at the weekend I had a big plan to go up make a video at Knockkill because I was racing at the weekend it was my first race back since all oh, this Covid thing I've done a couple of track days and that but this was my actual first race um, I've done another track the other week there as well and I didn't video it because we just went a wee hill contract done that, car was perfect Went up to Knock Hill yesterday, t two days ago, today uh, my first race basically of the year and car f fired up, drove in the trailer fine and that and we'd uh, just done our normal routine kind of stuff so we always like change oil before we go out, fresh set of plugs in it and the rest of it, way up we went and went out in qualifying, we qualified 6, we were 6 or 5th, I can't remember, but uh, I think it was 19 entries. I can't remember, 17 entries, 19, I've got a lot of entries for the race, we were further up the front, so it was good, it was quite a good qualifying for us, um, it was wet at Knock Hill, we were doing 58, I'm sure like that, uh, but we've only done 5 or 6 laps, and came back in and the car had stopped charging, so the alternator had failed, luckily enough one of the guys that we talked to, he had an alternator from Millington, um, it's slightly different, but we just we cut our alternator bracket in half and managed to fit the Millington alternator on and fired up, charged uh, all the rest of it. So we went out in the race, had a bit of a rubbish start to be fair. Um, the guy in front of me in the wee radical, he stalled on the line. So I had to go onto the grass to miss him and had a bit of a rubbish start. But made back a couple of places and then I think we'd done four or five laps and we were consistently getting quicker and quicker. I think the first lap was obviously miles out because we were coming off the line. The second lap, I'm sure it was like 58, 7. The third lap was like 57, it was a high 57, it was like 57, 8 or 57, 9. Fourth lap was a 57, 2 or a 57, 4. It was getting quicker and quicker each lap. And then in the fifth lap, as we came onto the main straight, the, the engine let go in quite a big fashion. So it properly blew up. Um, so I was a wee bit upset and I'd forgot to bring my camera gear and stuff, so I didn't get it in video. Uh, Alistair did. He had a camera on the car, so he got it in video. Um, unfortunately, I didn't. But I uh, came in yesterday, quite obviously upset with the whole situation, pulled the engine out and got a wee look at it. So I need to, the engine sitting behind me, so I still need to strip it down, but I'll just quickly show you what we've seen so far. So, so far, obviously, I've got the engine out, I've got the inlet off, and you're not going to see it without a light, but you can see the valves are bent, so it's bent, all the, all the valves are bent. Um, there is a small hole in this side of the block and obviously you can see where we've cut the bracket in half to fit the Millington alternator. Just I'll just get a wee light and there's obviously a big hole on this side of the block. Two wee settings here and I'll just show you. So there's obviously a big hole here and if you look up in you can see a piston, the rod clearly missing. Um, it looks like the piston's actually snapped, you can see where your gudgeon pin should be. Uh, so the piston is actually just half the piston really. Uh, big hole in the block, oil pump has been blown off. Um, yeah, so job tonight is to I'm going to pull the head off and get the crank and stuff out and just see exactly what damage is inside. But yeah, there's also sump sitting here, so there's some bits in the sump that's part of the rod, but actually most of the rod and the gudgeon pin is missing. So I can only assume that's up at Knock Hill somewhere. Somebody has that. Um, and obviously the car's missing an engine. So yeah, not so good, but I think we've got a wee plan sorted what we're going to do. Um, so straight away, you know, some helpers with you and stuff on the day. So obviously Alistair was with me, Amber was with me, and my friend Dean was with me. So straight away I was like, right, we'll rattle an engine in it, we'll get it back up for the next race and all the rest of it. And when uh, on the way home, Dean's like, ah, calm down, he's like, probably the best thing to do is we'll get an engine in it, but at the same time we'll do some upgrades and just make it a wee bit better than it already was. So I think right now the plan is we've got another engine that can go in the car and it's got uh, steel weights beam rods, I'm sure it will cause rough low compression pistons in it. It's got cams, it's got long studs, first my engine's all just standard. The only thing it's done to my engines is the pistons are machined for low compression. But everything and it's standard. I've got a set of cams, but standard 
Uh, there's no studs or anything like that. Obviously, we have 500 horsepower, so uh, this other engine should be a lot better. And it's, it's also new. It ran for five minutes, and it was me that drove it. I drove it in the other car that's in it at the minute. I turn it around and not kill just to run it in. Um, and that's all the running it's done as far as we know. I'm pretty sure, aye, sure it was. Up and down the street and that, but apart from that, aye, it's hardly ran. So we'll use that engine, but I think we're also going to convert the car to run uh, ECU Masters, ECU, and we'll either go, uh, probably a black or a, maybe a classic, but probably a black to be fair. Um, the guy that's going to be Matt, it's recommended that we go to a black. So we'll do that, it'll we'll probably be a wee project kind of thing, so I don't think we'll be racing again this year, unfortunately. But aye, we'll do that, we'll convert to the ECU, we'll maybe go T4 or GT30 or something as well, and a wee bit of more power would be good and also be able to data log and stuff and I think we'll also go like a digi dash, like a stack type dash or something um, make some improvements so that's the plan but we we'll go ahead, get this stripped in and we'll see exactly what's happened inside You can see it. Actually, actually it looks not too bad. You can obviously see these persons had valve cuts, but you can see there's been obviously contact. They see look alright. Obviously, we'll not be reusing them after this carry on, but one is obviously really far down in comparison. Yeah, we'll get that out suddenly. And as for the heat, I mean, I didn't even look at this here. Uh, yeah, aye, you can see the valves are flat rather than. I would be able to see the heat actually. Set of guides in it, that should actually be alright. I'd think. Yeah, set of guides and valves, that heat should actually run again, to be fair. Uh, heat casket was actually still fine. Just ideal. Obviously, I'd be replacing that, but. It's actually still fine. Yeah, try to go ahead, get a crank out of this and assess what's all happened there. So as you can see, I have knocked out the piston. Um, there's a wee bit down. The ball's actually no bad. I can't believe that the ball's like all right as it is. The bottom is a wee bit smashed, and obviously the valves are bent into the heat. But again, my two faces are all right. But here's um, that's what's left of the piston. Not much. Not much at all. Crazy. Crazy. It's definitely ten. Took a beating anyway. Crazy, but going to go ahead and just pull the crank out and the other pistons and rods out and any wee bits that will be using on another engine like water pump and stuff and that's it really. So that's us completely stripped down and as you can see it's actually there's loads of, we'll focus, there's loads of cracks as well. Um, you can see the rod's been punching in before it's exited. It's left a fair old hole. Um, the crank's over here. Obviously, the crank's doing a bit of damage as well, and obviously destroyed that. Don't know when the crank. Um, uncertain if that will be saved. We'll probably send that to the machine shop and see if they can fix that and balance it and see just how much we'd need ground off to make that right again. 
decide what to do from there. Personally, I've had I put this on my Facebook the other night there. Oh, sorry. Um, I put pictures of this on my Facebook the other night there and on my Instagram, and I've had loads and loads of messages and comments and people private messaging me and stuff asking what the failure was. Obviously, there's a, a few. I'm not saying that I've got a lot of friends, right? But, uh, there's obviously quite a few people following me on Facebook and Instagram purely because of the cause and the goat causes and stuff. So I've had a, a load of people asking me what the, the actual cause of the failure was. Um, from me looking at it and stripping it and uh, from experience basically with doing these engines in the past, I would say either small end or piston has failed. Uh, I was actually 99% I'm going to say piston because if you remember maybe about a year and a half two years ago when we actually put this block in the car the ones that we turn out the, we changed the pistons because on the pistons that were turned out round about the gudgeon pin there was small cracks um, so that's why we changed uh, changed them out basically so I was pretty sure obviously you can see this is ripped through the gudgeon pin the bottom half of the pistons missing top half there and half of the like your journal for the gudgeon pin to go in is still there on both sides of the piston. So when I seen it from underneath, I was 99% that it was piston failure. It's caused that I know the crank is trashed, but obviously the rod has broke, so that's it's just trashed basically. Um, but now that I've got these pistons out, I would maybe actually say small end as well. Alistair reckon small end, but when you feel the other three pistons, the small ends are pretty bad on them. Um, not not away, but they're no destroyed, but there is play in them. So maybe small end as well. Uh, another reason I would say not big end is because it's number one. And if you've done anything, the engines or causes or whatever, you, on causes it's always four that spins. And there's your shells that were in four in there. They're mint. Three and two are both absolutely mint as well. And if you remember, these were actually second hand uh, big ends and mains that went into this engine when we built it because we only built it to do one race. Because we only needed to finish one race to get enough points last year to win our class. So we just flung this engine together to do one race. And they're standard shells, they're just four shells, obviously from the factory, uh, ancient, and we used them just to do one race, but it ran mint that race, and we done another, f I think it was another four races after that, so like two meetings, four races, mint done, I think we've done four or five track days, been mint, um, so it has, it's done its job basically, but then it's obviously let go, big time, um, but I, with the number four thing, it's obviously number one's closest to the oil pump, so that's obviously getting the most pressure out of all of it, so I can't see it being uh, an oil related issue there, like a big end issue, I just I just don't see it, it's always four, any engine we've done that's had big ends go, it's always four, um, so I kind of see it, I think personally, I know everybody's got their own opinions and there'll be loads of people who tell me not as big end, not as near, blah blah blah, but personally for me it's either piston or small end that's failed, um, but that's that, that's a strip done anyway, um, aye, my next video will be, I'll get the engine out of the other car and I need to build the focus up to get into the other car and stuff. So we'll probably do that video later this week. Um, we'll try and get back into the doing videos every other day. Because that'd be good. But anyway, I hope you have enjoyed this video. I've no, personally, because it's carnage. But um, it was certainly going good. And I think it'll go even better with all the new wee bits on the car and that. And hopefully they're a lot faster next year than it was this year. Um, a lot more competitive. I'd like to be up the front, basically. Um, but aye, this engine's destroyed. So I hope you have enjoyed seeing it. Um, aye, I don't know. I don't know what to say. But aye, hope you guys have enjoyed the video. And please like the video, comment on it, ask any questions you want to know, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Please. Thank you, and thanks for watching the video, and I'll see you in the next video.